Hey there, <laughs> and happy holidays. You know, one of the cool things about a holiday is that you know they're coming. You can get ready to cook a killer meal, you have time to do it, and a lot of people, maybe not restaurant folks, but a lot of people actually don't work on holidays. So, to me, that says, hey, cook something cool, uh, which is what we're gonna do today. So, I'm gonna smoke a Chateaubriand, and then we're gonna grill it off just in time for dinner. Oh, and maybe some black eyed peas too. What I want to do is a Chateaubriand, also known as a beef tenderloin. So it's actually from the midsection of a tenderloin. Uh, I already prepped these out at the restaurant, hence the brown butcher paper. So since we've got a little bit of lead time, we're going to go ahead and dry brine this. Going to unroll it. It's looking pretty good. You know, big old hunk of really expensive yet tender meat. All I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of kosher salt on there. We're gonna stick it in the refrigerator up on a cooling rack. Gonna let it hang out for at least 24 hours. I think 36 is fine. The reason is, is you wanna dry out the surface so we can get a better Maillard reaction later when we cook this. But also what it's gonna do when you put the salt on, it pulls out the moisture and then the meat starts to dry out. It reabsorbs that and it really pulls out a lot of flavor. So there's really, on this particular cut, there's not a ton of flavor involved. You know, there's not a lot of fat and that's kind of where everybody kind of thinks that this isn't a great piece of meat, although it really is truly one of my favorite pieces of meat. It's so tender, but like I said, it lacks fat. So dry brining overnight is a good way to get more flavor out of that. It's a good way to pull out as much flavor as you possibly can. So anywho, not gonna waste any time here. Got my clean hand. Now, if you were the nerdy type and you happen to have a scale, I'm going for 1.52%, or you can just eyeball it. So the reason why I like 1.52, figured this out in the book, um, it leaves you enough wiggle room for some finishing salt later. It, it'll be intentionally just a little bit under seasoned. So I've got this thing salted. I'm gonna put it in the fridge back here for about 24, 30 hours, somewhere in there. You don't want it to get too dried out on the edges, uh, but you definitely want it to be pretty dry before we cook this later. Clean hand. Well, alas, one dry brined Chateaubriand. It's been dry brining for about 24 hours. And I will say, you may notice that I'm wearing the same shirt and this is a different Chateaubriand. TV time in it. So this one, I salted yesterday. It's been hanging out in the refrigerator for a little over 24 hours. We can kind of look and see. This is, I've had this tempering for a little bit, so it's starting to sweat a little bit, which is good because you actually do want a little bit of moisture on it. When you dry brine something at a certain point, it's air dried in the refrigerator, salt's pulled out the moisture, it's reabsorbed, it's dried out, and you'll start to see some of these edges that kind of dry out. That's a, that's a good sign, uh, totally working, but if you're gonna smoke something, it won't actually get any smoke if it's dry. So if it is dry, you wanna spritz it with something, doesn't really matter what, just wet it. Or in this case, I let this temper. So it's been out of the refrigerator for about two hours, hanging out, getting the fire going, getting everything where it needs to be. And it's got a good level of moisture on here. So pretty much it's good to go. I'm gonna stick it on the smoker with one glove. When I go to weddings, I usually keep a nitrile glove in my coat pocket. Good looking hunk of meat right here. Mm, mm, mm. Um, not too worried about the uh, barbecue pit here. Gonna lurk in the 200 degree range. Gonna put a thermometer in here. We're gonna cook this thing up to 120, 123, somewhere in that range. We really wanna minimize carryover. So gonna keep the temperature low. Got a water pan in here. Not gonna keep it too terribly smoky, but kind of normal, normal fire situation. So it's been hanging out for a while. It's tempered. It's not too super duper cold. Uh, you don't really wanna put an ice cold piece of meat on a hot cooker because you don't wanna dry out the edges. So this is always kind of the sweet spot on these barbecue pits. You've got all this air coming in. So this is really where I wanna go. I'm also gonna use trusty thermometer. Gonna go right in the middle, right about there. We are gonna shut the lid so we can start cooking, so. 
I'm gonna set this thing. 205. Oh my gosh, what was I cooking last time? I'm gonna set the alarm for 120. So if you're watching the thermometer, you're kind of easing into it, maybe start backing off your fire a little bit and let it kind of ramp down so you kind of stay right at the 120 range. I think I need reading glasses. So it's pretty humid outside. You know, really when you're working with fire, sometimes you want to use bigger, denser pieces. Sometimes you want to use smaller, denser pieces. Sometimes you need, you know, a bigger, lighter piece of wood. So the needs with the weather and the cooker and whatever you're doing always kind of dictate what kind of firewood you're going to use. So today, since this wood's got a lot of moisture, it's really humid outside, I'm using really smaller pieces. And the reason is, with all that moisture in the wood, it's not going to burn quick. It's going to take energy away from the fire to actually ignite and combust properly. So with a smaller piece, that kind of gets me where I want to be a lot quicker with this fire. But the real thing it's doing is it's helping me keep a solid coal bed. And if you look in here, I don't have much of a coal bed going because I just started this fire. But after an hour or two, I should have a pretty good coal bed and that'll really help stabilize everything. And it'll also help this wood ignite. Uh, so we're just kind of getting started right now. But like I said, you know, we've got the Chateaubriand in there. We're not looking for actual cooking temperatures, just around 200-ish degrees. Just keep it fairly as clean as possible. Uh, but we're just par cooking this thing. So anyway, that's about it for this. The Chateaubriand, it's for New Year's Day. And another thing you have to have on New Year's Day, black eyed peas. Not gonna mess with cabbage, but I'm gonna work. Well, first things first. <clears throat> Anywho, let's talk black eyed peas. It's way too lengthy for this video, but I'm gonna jot down just a simple little recipe, overly complicated, not even that much of a recipe, just, just a good technique for black eyed peas. All right, how to cook black eyed peas. Cool, got it. All right, got this thing written out here. Uh, it says black eyed peas. First thing, if you can get fresh peas, cool. Fresh peas don't necessarily absorb the flavor in the same way, but I do prefer them. For this one, I went dried black eyed peas because, well, they're readily available. Start off with beef stock, veal stock. I prefer to use beef. Uh, you can mix a little bit of chicken. Hopefully you can make your own stocks. If not, super judge free zone. Or is it? Start off with the stock, add some salt, taste it. You want it to be just a little bit saltier than you want the finished product to be, just a little bit. At that point, soak your peas overnight in the fridge. If you've got time, smoke some bacon, ham hocks, rib scraps, save some brisket scraps for this stuff. Something kind of smoky, not a huge deal. Smoke it, you know, cho choose your own smoking adventure for this for sure. Take the bacon, cook down the bacon in a pot, render the fat don't cook it too much uh, but add some onions add some garlic saute it all together and then scoop out a little bit of that stock that you've been soaking the peas in deglaze the pan get all the little bits all the fond off the bottom if you will add the peas cook to a very low simmer and uh, pull off right before they're tender and don't reduce the uh, stock at all and there you go black eyed peas Herbagersh! It must be done. Well, 120.4. I hope it's not overcooked. Yeah, so it turns out we didn't move it at all. Um, nice and, and dried out. When you cook things like this, you always want to par cook them a little lower than you really are going to finish them later because they're probably going to overcook a little bit when we grill it off. So that's why we're doing this at 120. I'm going to let this thing rest. This thing is looking good. All right, so it's looking super nice, really pretty red color, nice and mahogany. One of the cool things about cooking at such a low temperature is you really tend to not dry anything out. Like this whole thing is pretty darn usable and that's great because it was really flipping expensive. So I'm super into this. Um, you may notice I've got it on some plastic wrap and yes, this is been around for a while so this is kind of you know a good point if you're really going to par cook something like for an event or whatever cook it up to temp plastic wrap it 
the, uh, the smoke will continue to penetrate as it sits here, but you can grill it off later and stuff. That's fine. I'm going to go all the way through. I'm going to let it rest for a little bit, but I don't want it to dry out because obviously it's pretty dry. So I'm going to plastic wrap this just to keep it good and moist. Also to keep the birds off of it. But yeah, we're just going to let this thing hang out and for a little bit until we're ready to eat. So Chateau Beyond has been resting for about an hour and a half. Uh, if you had traveled with this thing or park hugged it the night before, you would have pulled it out a couple of hours ago to let it temper because you don't want to put super cold meat on the grill, blah, 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 same thing all the time. Uh, but anyway, this one's been resting for a while and it's definitely ready to grill off. I'm going to dump these coals, but before that, one of the cool features of this PKAF is that the lid comes off. So I'm going to take this off, set it right here because I want a landing place for this hot charcoal chimney. So because I don't need all the coals. Maybe leave a couple. Got my trusty pair of tongs just for fires. I've got a short log and that piece of meat's not too terribly large. So I'm going to put some coals over here and I'm just going to put a piece of wood there. Let it get warm. We'll just take a couple minutes. So this guy's been resting, not, not cold, not terribly hot. Man, it smells really nice. Um, just cause I'm outside and don't want to go wash my hands again. I'm going to put on a glove. Uh, going to get my little thermometer ready. Definitely going to need that. Now we didn't oil this before. We just did salt and let the natural moisture in the meat um, kind of be the carrier for smoke, but I don't want it to stick. So I'm going to put just a little bit of grapeseed oil on here. Oops, maybe that's a little too much. All right. Oh yeah, is that right? Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Very nice, very nice. It's really, when you cook something like this, and you've already part cooked something that you're going to pick up later in like a two part cook. Most of the time you have to have more heat on the pickup, AKA the pickup than you usually would. So it's kind of something to keep in mind. You don't want it crazy hot. You don't want to like burn stuff, but yeah, you probably want your charcoal a little bit hotter than usual. I'm just going to keep it moving a lot. We don't want to live in one place for too long. Oh my God, this thing looks so darn good. So I started off with the meat right over the log because it was the cool spot. That's kind of why you do it like this because if it's too hot over here, you want to have a safe zone to go off to because it definitely didn't want to burn the outside. And you can see right here, if we were super looking, I kind of got a little bit too hot and that fat got a little crispy. It was like, uh-oh, it's a little hot. So that kind of, you know, is a clue. It's a little red flag there to get to a cooler zone. So as this piece of meat starts catching up a little bit, I actually started going closer towards the hot spot as the coals were dying off. So it's good. I think it's ready to go. It feels right. It's not quite as loose as it was when we pulled it off the smoker, which is exactly how we want it to feel. But also one of my signs is that the muscles are kind of starting to feather out a little bit, which tells me that the edges are getting cooked. Definitely time to pull this thing. Uh, and because it's a New Year's meal, black eyed peas, So we're going to let this Chateaubriand rest for a couple minutes, not very long. So essentially, as soon as you can touch it and not go, ow, that's when you cut it. So we're going to hang out with that for just a minute. This thing's feeling real nice, still warm. This is always my favorite little piece. Oh, yeah. doesn't need much salt, that's for sure, but I can't resist. I just have to put a little bit of crunchy salt on there. So you can see where the smoke kind of reacted with the meat, got some penetration there. Beautiful red color. Man, it's, it's really gosh darn good, so. 
fix myself a bow. Just to recap a little bit, dry brined the Chateaubriand, which is the middle section of a beef tenderloin. Use the whole thing, whatever, just go to your butcher shop. We dry brined it 1.52% salt, air dried it in the refrigerator for 36 to 24 hours ahead of time, pulled it out, we smoked it at about 200 degrees uh, for about an hour and a half is about how long it should take. We tempered this for about two hours before we put it on the cooker, by the way. Uh, internal temp, 120, 123 is about right. Let it rest for a little bit, get it back up to temp on a grill and slice it and add a little bit of crunchy salt. It's good to go. And don't forget the black eyed peas. Happy holidays. Dude. Mm. This is really good. I can't wait for New Year's Day. I'm literally just going to stand here and eat this whole thing.